Hello everyone, welcome back. Today it is Thursday night for me on May the 19th, uh, just shortly before midnight, and I wanted to get this recorded earlier, and sorry I didn't, but let's get into it. The ex-royal grifters and much more, and let's start with a disclaimer. And again, these are just all my thoughts and opinions, and I want to go over and start with a story. And before I click on it, it is going to be a story that Mr. Christie is talking about on GBN News. And it's about the Harry and Meghan possibly having a docuseries or behind the scenes reality uh, for Netflix. So let's quickly listen to him and then I'll get into the stories behind it. Thank you. So, Meghan and Harry are the new Kardashians, apparently. Only, arguably, even less talented. Uh, they had grand plans, didn't they, when they turned their backs on royal life and indeed this country. But actually, they're just low-rent, high-maintenance reality TV goons. The Montecito monarchs are yet to create any content whatsoever for Netflix, despite penning a $100 million deal with the streaming service. And in fact, Meghan Markle's animated show Pearl, which was planned to centre on the adventures of a 12-year-old girl who was inspired by influential women from history. Yes, well, that got canned, didn't it? And it's not really hard to see why that was cancelled. I think I'd rather watch a rerun of Crossroads. In fact, I'd probably rather stick pins in my eyes. Apparently, though, the show was only in the development stage. A bit like Harry's brain. But now, they're going to be followed around by a TV crew as part of a Kardashian-style show. Great, another show about phenomenally wealthy, vacuous Hollywood celebrities. Look, the money's great, and to be honest with you, I'd probably do absolutely anything for $100 million. But, actually, it's a sign of how far they've fallen. Certainly Harry, anyway. It's really strange for a couple who wanted to find freedom and escape the public eye to sign up to do a show that involved essentially having a camera crew follow them around the whole time. It's almost like they don't actually want privacy, isn't it? It's almost like they just want to be rich and famous. They swap the true high-calibre class of the royal family for plastic novelty fakery. And the thing was as well, the British public really loved Harry, like really genuinely loved him. And he's turned his back on that for people like James Corden and Oprah or Ellen DeGeneres, or however you pronounce her surname. Let's just see how long those people stick around when things start to go south for Harry and Meghan, shall we? They were supposed to be going their own way and doing meaningful things, but instead they're doing something that's akin to the Kardashians, or frankly, the Real Housewives of Cheshire. Supposedly, the Netflix show is going to come out in conjunction with Harry's tell-all book. I'm not sure how much his book deal is, but... It does turn out that you can put a price on betraying your family, making your elderly grandma's life difficult and alienating the country of your birth. I don't know about you, but I have absolutely no desire whatsoever to watch a fly-on-the-wall show about a B-list soap actress and Meghan Markle's bad carrier. Yes, it may be true that Harry and Meghan are rich, 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 but actually, I think the way they've gone about speaking their truth, finding their freedom, is cheap, cheap, cheap. Okay, let's move on. So um, you can tell he's, um, how he feels about that. Let's, uh, in Style says, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's Netflix show is reportedly an at-home docuseries, like Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but with royal titles. The timing is still being discussed. A producer said, and things are up in the air. So let me just uh, say, this isn't, um, they aren't announcing that it's being done. They're just simply saying that um, this is a, an idea that they put out to Harry and Meghan because we know that the other ideas that Meghan has come up with haven't um, been approved or accepted and that they had recently canceled um, Pearl her animation series. So this is just something being talked about. It doesn't mean that they're going to do it. We all know that they've been carrying cameras around with them for everything that they've done, which is basically nothing. But um, maybe in case that uh, some of those clips might end up in something or even in the Heart of the Invictus. But the streamer wanted the time uh, the show to come out in release of Harry's highly anticipated memoir. But the Sussexes reportedly want the show to bow in in 2023. So I don't think it's uh, too much up to them, but I think it's whether or not they want to keep their deal with Netflix or whether they don't. We all know that Megan likes to control everything, so I can't imagine that this would go very well. And if it did, it would be all fake because she's certainly not going to show us how she is in real life and how she orders everyone around and talks down to people. 
but we'll just have to wait and see if it happens. I personally don't think it's something that they would agree to doing because, again, that would give up, um, Megan would have to give up her control. So will this be another crash and burn for the duo? I absolutely think it would. If you don't like someone to start with and you've already had years of bad press, I don't think it's going to change their opinions. And the only way that people would tune in is if there's drama. And unlike the Kardashians, Meghan and Harry um, have themselves in such a small bubble that they really don't associate with either family. And it seems like they don't have any friends except for the ones that come out and speak on their behalf, like James Corden, to say, that there was a play date with his children and theirs. I don't believe that for one minute. We know that if you're a client of um, uh, Sunshine Sachs, that they it's typical for them to ask you to speak out in support of one of their other clients because they may ask you, um, you may be asked to do the same for them at some point. So, Prince Harry Invictus Games loses help for hero support. At first, it seemed like a matter, a match made in heaven. Um, oddies of lovey money and the Sussexes have an actual members of the royal family on the books for Netflix. But nearly two years on and the cracks are showing in the marriage as a new report claiming that the upcoming Platinum Jubilee celebrations in London could be a make or break inflection point. Now, again, I kind of think that it's Harry and Meghan putting these stories out there to kind of be able to tell Netflix, no, they know that if um, the royal family tells them that they're not going to be able to film or have anybody on grounds, that that's going to be the case. And maybe this is a way of just if something happens with their deal at Netflix, I feel like they could say, well, they put pressure on us to talk about the family and that just wasn't something they were going to do. But it said she added a more cynical mind could think the Sussexes return to the UK is to make nice just as the biggest royal PR event in a decade rolls around, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. She continued, this is Harry and Meghan being forced to accept a downgrade while the world watches on. Netflix wants to see drama. They want to see something that they think would be entertaining and people would tune in to watch. It's a business decision for them, and it all comes down to whether or not it can be a moneymaker, and they're still not a sure thing. And I don't think people would tune in because Megan wouldn't allow them to film or include any of the drama, for instance, her order and Harry around or there being a disagreement. And that's what people would want to watch. But... Since I don't think that's the case, I think that no matter what they put in the show, if they did it, everybody would say, nope, not watching it, not having it, boo, it's a bunch of fake stuff, and we don't like the couple anyway. So, GB News UK, Prince Harry's Invictus Game loses help for hero support. So, it said the decision was made by the Ministry of Defense, who have thanked the Ditch Charity for their support. Prince Harry's Invictus Games has lost its financial support from injured and wounded veterans charity, Help for Heroes. And I think they're the ones that actually paid for the transportation for the people participating in the games, the veterans and their families, to be able to go over. So, now it seems as though that they're they're going to be working with another. The games were founded by Harry back in 2014 when the most recent competition taken place in the Netherlands last month. But now Help for Heroes, who were responsible for training the UK team, have now had their contract scrapped by the Ministry of Defence. That's odd. Instead, the MOD has chosen the British Royal Legion to back the event because they are able to provide more, more personal, secure funding. Is that because he knows Netflix won't back them next year and now they're having to look for additional funding and people aren't um, just rolling in and giving money to anything that Harry and Meghan are associated with currently? In a statement, Help for Heroes has insisted that the decision to strip them of the contract was out of their hands. Also, I'll say when they were promoting on their website and Harry was promoting for his, the t comments had to be turned off because people were asking questions and uh, they wanted to have things to say and give their opinion. And Harry, as we know, doesn't like anybody to give their opinion about anything that he and Megan does. If he can't control what a person's opinion is or what they might say, then he just sits or sits all together by turning the comments off. 
So now we have a congratulations for someone. Let's move on and see who that is. So Prince Harry's ex-girlfriend, Chelsea Davey, Mary's brother of Hollywood star. You'll notice in one of my videos not too long ago, I gave you a story about Chelsea and um, her newborn son. And I told you a little bit about that and who she was dating. And it was actually a young man that went to Eton with uh, Prince Harry. He was a year ahead of him. Miss Davy tied the knot with Sam Cutmore Scott, the brother of a tenant and Dunkirk actor, Jack Cutmore Scott. The pair, who have recently welcomed the birth of a newborn baby, reportedly swapped vows at a low-key wedding. You see, that's how you do it. You do it at a low-key, respectful wedding of your family and friends. You don't put everything out in the media because you don't want all of these headlines about it. Uh, when you're getting married, it's a very personal and private thing, and you would like to have those that you care about involved, and she doesn't want to have headlines where it's talking about her wedding and associate it with Prince Harry, and I don't blame her one bit. So congratulations to Chelsea and Sam, and their baby was named Leo, and he was also kept secret until he was born and out in the press, not many people even knowing that she was pregnant. So, now we're going to talk about a world premiere. And what is that? Well, it's, that's right, baby. It is Tom Cruise and Maverick. And it's the return or remake of his movie that he made probably 20 years ago. And he appeared at the Royal Pre <laughs> And he made sure that uh, she was accompanied by giving her a hand, and uh, which was very respectful. And he is a good guy. I know. I you know sometimes we might look and say we don't care for his uh, views on Scientology or other things, but he is a worldwide global superstar. And it had been rumored that Megan had met with Tom Cruise at Soho House in Malibu shortly after she and Harry arrived in California. She was hoping that uh, connecting with some of these A-listers and having this meeting that she might be able to star alongside Tom in a crew uh, in a movie or that he would put in a good word for her. And of course, we know she asked for George's help and, and Oprah and that there were offers rumored to have come in, but they were beneath her because she thought, even though she had never been a leading lady, that she was entitled now that she was a royal and was entitled to be an, um, an A-lister. So what what's Megan's reaction to finding out that there's this pe uh, premiere and that she wasn't invited and she's getting word about it? Well, fire the whole PR staff. What am I going to do? Oh, my gosh. Now she's over there with Tom Cruise, and I could be walking the red carpet with Harry and be associated with him and try to con him into giving me a role. Oh, what does Oprah say? Yep, you real mad, Megan. You real mad. Maybe you know how it feels after what you did when I interviewed you and you told me all those mistruths and you made me look like a fool that I had to bury the footage of the interview and um, suffer the backlash and ridicule caused by you and your lying, grifting husband. That's right. And, Me and Megan... Oprah doesn't want to interview you. It was said by Neil Sean that Harpo Productions had informed him that she had no interest of interviewing Megan and Harry again, that she didn't like to go backwards and do interviews again. 
We know what the reason is. So what does Megan do? Harry, get off your horse and get back here and fix this. Why were we not invited to, to the royal premiere? And there we get the grifters. So, impossible. Mexit plan slapped down by the Queen. Now, this was a recent article, and it said that Meghan and Harry's initial plan for life away from the firm was slapped down by the Queen. Well, we know when they uh, announced this back in 2019 that they were working to become financially independent, right? You just wanted to go off, and you thought you would have um, uh, world, global, international fame, that you would be an A-lister, and that Hollywood would uh, welcome you with open arms. Well, it seems as though they don't like grifters either. A statement shared by the couple at the time noted that they had planned to split their time between North America and the UK. Well, yes, Megan, we know that was your plan, but the Queen didn't really agree to that, did she? Because she didn't think you could do both. The couple proposed plan to be part-time royals was denounced denounced by the Queen, a royal author has claimed. Royal biographer Andrew Morton claims that the monarch and her late husband, Prince Philip, were not fans of the couple's half-in, half-out fixture, deeming it was an impossible gesture. And we know that Prince Philip out and out said, what What are they doing? What are they trying to do here? And he was very upset, especially with Harry, because to him, to leave was uh, abandoning his duty to queen and country. He was leaving behind everything that they had worked hard to establish for him and all his faux pas that had been covered up in the media. And he was going to head over to Hollywood where he wouldn't have the uh, the royal men in gray suits be able to uh, cover up all of his lies and, and dirty dealings. So next we have Prince Andrew obsessed with returning to public life. It would seem so, especially with him walking his mother into the uh, church during the Thanksgiving memorial service of his father. It, it was said that he visits the queen um, at least three times a day. So I guess he feels like after a period of time, he will be able to come out and to have his image uh, his image shined up again and hopefully uh, resume public roles. I don't think that's going to ever happen. Prince Andrew will use his relationship with the Queen to return to a uh, working royal life, claims royal author Tina Brown. The controversial royal figure is set to work his way back toward active royal duties ahead of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations claim Miss Brown. Prince Andrew could use the relationship with his mother, the Queen, to guide his return to royal public life. Speculated, and again, that's just speculated by the royal author. Speaking to 60 Minutes Australia, and I watched this the other night, Miss Brown said Andrew fully expects to be rehabilitated. He's not even accepted that he's going to have to have a quiet few years. He thinks it'll be much sooner. And I want to talk about this because I had brought it up, I think, in other videos videos about uh, the Royal Lodge where uh, the, well, the ex-Duke, where Andrew and Fergie have resided. Um, and I'll just tell you that, oh, that few people had added in saying that they didn't have to pay rent, that they had a 75-year lease, and they were exactly correct. So let me correct the record and give you this update. In 2003, the Duke of York was granted a lease agreement by the Crown Estate for 75 years. The property leased included the Royal Lodge, a gardener's cottage, a chapel lodge, and six lodge cottages, a police security accommodation in addition to 40 hectares of land. The lease agreement required Prince Andrew to carry out, as his own expense, refurbishments estimated at 7.5 million pounds as of September 2002 prices. Excluded, excluding VAC, this sum was exceeded. It was also provided for a premium payment of $1 million. The National Audit Office report that the lease agreement states that the Crown Estate's independent advisors had advised that the refurbishment work would cost uh, that amount of money once the prince committed to spending seven point five million on refurbishment, it was decided that no rental would be required as he would be treated as having effectively bought out the notional annual rental payment 
because it exceeded the five million pounds required for refurbishment. As a result, only one million premium was paid to the Crown Estate. There is no provision for any further rent review over the life of the 75-year lease agreement, unlike the rent reviews provided by the case in Bagshot Park. Residents of Prince Edward and Earl of Wessex and also leased from the Crown. After the Duke of York stepped down from public duties in November of 2019, the flagpole on the roof of the Royal Lodge was removed. The flagpole was previously used by to used to fly the personal royal standard of the Duke of York when in residence until his titles were put in abeyance. And here's a story I had not heard before, and this was just recently published in Woman and Home. Why Meghan Markle was uninvited to Pippa Middleton's wedding at the last minute. It says Meghan Markle was uninvited from Pippa Middleton's wedding because of an awkward decision from the bride. Meghan Markle, the Duchess, was uninvited by at Pippa's wedding at the last minute. Royal experts have claimed that the bride and Carol Middleton feared that the Duchess would overshadow the main event and pull focus from Pippa on her big day, so she was uninvited to the service. At the time, there were rumors that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were dating, and the press were desperate to snap a shot of the couple together at an event. This meant that if Meghan was snapped at the event, Prince Harry, their secret relationship would be revealed and would upstage the wedding of Pippa and her husband. So no invite for you, Meghan. The experts, uh, using that loosely, Omid Scobie and Carolyn Duran said in their book, Finding Freedom, that the couple had been hesitant about showing up for their wedding together. And finally, when a headline on the day of the wedding emerged that compared Pippa and Meghan's bottoms, the decision was made that Meghan should not attend the ceremony. <gasps> oh, just zip it, Omid. Now, I had had planned a chatting with Paula M. last night, um, or yesterday afternoon as it was for me. I had confirmed with her yesterday, and um, up until just an hour or so before, she was pl planned to be on it, and um, so I'd advertised it on my uh, community page as well as on social media. So I want to thank everyone who joined the five-hour and I think 23-minute live yesterday, and I'm sorry Paula was unable to make the live as she was unwell at the last minute. Um, after I had went on and was uh, waiting on her to join, I then looked back at my WhatsApp messages and saw one from Paula that said that she had had a flare-up of her lupus and that uh, she was at the hospital or, or going in for a checkup. Later during that uh, live call, I, I got another message saying she was headed home from the hospital and I told her we were still on, and I invited her to come on with us, that she could even do that by her telephone. Um, I didn't hear back from her, and in that message, she just said that uh, she would, or no, a later message said that she would reach out to me uh, tomorrow, meaning today for me, but I did not hear back from her. I did message her and follow up because I was concerned about her, and I wanted to make sure she was okay. I did not get a response back and was unable to, to ask her. So if we could say a prayer for Paula that uh, she's feeling better. Now, I really enjoyed your comments on several of the videos that I did recently. I had about, um, I think, 15 different comments. But I think I'm going to share with you seven or eight in this and, uh, and then try to include some of the other comments from our viewers in maybe the next two videos. So... Uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. So, this is in regards to Samantha's uh, case against Megan. Michelle wrote, Even a brilliant law lawyer is only as good as his client. The lawyer can give the world's best advice, but if the client is an idiot and orders the lawyers to proceed, then the lawyer takes advice, orders from who he is, is paying the bill, even if the lawyer refused to file a lawsuit, what clients do is to shop around until they find someone who will. 
My guess is because Samantha had made friends with dozens of people who can't stand Megan, and most of the world feels the same way. Samantha felt it was a slam dunk win, but Samantha can't sue Megan on behalf of everybody, so Megan has lied and, um, and abused all about her. She has to sue on what Megan has done to her, and that's exactly what it is, and not what she said or not what was said in an email. Also, everybody was telling Samantha to proceed, so she feels like she was egged on by the community that says you should fight, you should sue her, you'd have a case. The entire public were pushing her. Most of my warnings were um, being deleted. I have always felt this is high risk. Samantha cannot afford to lose. And we know that attorneys don't do anything for free, that she would have had to come up with a retainer and a substantial amount based on how long they thought this trial might take place and whatever their bill billable hours were. The people who could successfully Megan are those whom Megan has abused. They have lost their jobs, etc., or Megan has lied about, slandered in public, and they have suffered financial loss. They would have they would have a good chance. But for someone like Samantha, who makes money off the back of Megan and her behavior, she is treading where sharks swim. So that was very good. Thank you, Michelle. Sue Johns writes on her opinion on Megan. She has has pegged right from the beginning by lying about how she was being treated by the paparazzi. She knew exactly how to keep Paz under her control, by which mimicking his mother as they fell for it. Has is never going to be released by her until something happens. She's got her talons into him, and to keep the peace, he just wants a long with everything, it goes along with everything that she does. So they don't have their supposed children and there's, uh, they're ashamed of keeping up with the lies. I think a narcissist uses that person for their own benefit by secluding them away from the family and friends. So the only person that they have to rely on is their jailer, which she is. Your assessment of those two is spot on. Has is never going to get the collective help from anyone unless he has sanctioned them into a psychiatric hospital well away from her clutches. He is an abused husband by what she has a classic abuser of men. Yes, she has been a professional madam by working as a yacht girl, working for Epstein Island, and also working at Soho House. She's always got to have men around her to make her feel loved. She played Oprah like a fiddle and ruined her reputation with all of those lies that were never checked out. And I agree, Sue Johns. Anonymous said, yes, has, does, has PTSD, but it's not what most people associate with it. Has isn't bright enough to understand that she's using him to further herself at this time. He never struck with stuck with the therapy, and there's has downfall. Keep her away from self-medicating him. She's a danger to has. Has needs re rescuing from the clutches and given chance to repair his life and his family. Thank you, Anonymous. Kitty Cat says, in regard to the children, they can't take the kids out when they don't exist. The dolls have been packed away. They used to rent a kid several times, including the Christmas photo by which they can't take rent a kids or excuse yeah, rent a kids to the UK, passports and questions. And at least one parent has to accompany the child. The gruesome twosome would have to answer for the world's, not to mention the families, as why those other people were there 24-7. It's not going to happen. I really can't figure out how they think that they are going to talk their way out of this when it comes to uh, the children. If... that live with them, it can't stay hidden forever. How are they going to, on the worst day, make it okay? It's already too stupid and too 
comprehend comprehended how they are going to get out of this one. That is how people with grocery lists, mental issues, and people that are lying, narcissistic, psychopaths, scary, believe Wade regard to how to explain their actions later. So, Detroiter here says, if the duo show up for the su- Jubilee, if they dare to show up in public, shame, shame, shame on the monarch for allowing this. The people need a bullhorns, rotten tomatoes, and a collective message on the back of their shirts that will be displayed en masse when the Brits turn their backs to whomever this grotesque couple appear. So what do you think about the children my vote would be pictured of rotten tomatoes, pu- uh, putrid fish, and a, just a small dose of piss off. Jubilee attendance and Oprah. Beryl Clothier. Good morning, Moonchild. The game the Harkles are playing is quite astonishing. I really don't know if they will attend the Jubilee at all. How could they face the family and interact with them after all the damage they have done? I think all think all they will have done. They won't attend, she said. They have not yet committed. Yada 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 is still and I'm just looking, let's see. Give me just a second. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, okay. So, said yada, yada, yada is all deliberate. Hot air to keep them in other news. Um, They are playing games. As for Oprah giving them more of her time, that won't happen. Oprah is not a fool, and I'm quite sure she too feels that she can be betrayed by them. I think she feels it and knows that she was betrayed by them. So, um, let's go out with just a few slides. And this was from the uh, Royal Premiere that William and Catherine attended. And that's Tom Cruise. I'm not sure if that's Jerry Bruckheimer, the uh, director, on his left or not. But you can see, look at this. And he very respectfully and politely steps back, allows William and Catherine to go up and greet the other members. Oh, I forget this guy's name.